In this video, we're going to take a look at partial fractions. So let's say we have a single fraction, which has two distinct linear factors in the denominator. And what we can do here is we can split this single fraction into two separate fractions, and we call these separate fractions partial fractions. So to begin with here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give an algebraic fraction. So let's say I've got 5x plus 17. So we have 5x plus 17, and that's all over x plus 4, and x plus 3. Okay, now in this case here, I've got two distinct linear factors. I've got x plus 4 and x plus 3, so my two distinct linear factors here in the denominator. So what we can do then here is we can split this into partial fractions. In this case here, this would be identical. So this would be a over x plus 4, and we'd have plus b over x plus 3, like so, okay? And in this case here, then a and b would be constants to be found. So the question here then is, how do we find the value of those constants a and b? So there's two methods here in particular that we look at for partial fractions in A-level maths. So the first method is by using substitution. Now this personally is the method that I prefer, and that's the method I'm gonna demonstrate in this video. However, the other method is by equating coefficients. So there isn't one set way that you have to use, but like I said, for this video, I'm gonna demonstrate substitution. So what's the first thing that we do here? Well, we start by getting this side here, my right-hand side of this identity over a common denominator. So in that case then, I times this fraction here by x plus three, I times this fraction here by x plus 4. And in that case, then we'd have that over a common denominator. So what I'm going to get then is a lots of x plus 3. We'd have plus b lots of x plus 4. And this would all be over x plus 4 and x plus 3. Okay, I've got x plus 4. and x plus 3. Okay. So what I've done now is I've got this over a common denominator here. So this now is over a common denominator. And in this case here then, what I'm going to do now is set my numerators to be identical. Okay. So this numerator here and this numerator here are now identical. So in that case then, what I get here is a lots of x plus 3 plus b lots of x plus 4, that's identical to 5x plus 17. Okay. So we've got this over a common denominator. We've set the numerators to be equal. That's what we obtain here. And now what we do is we now use substitution. So what I need to do here then is substitute values of x to eliminate a and b. So to eliminate a and b here, for example, if I was to pick x equals, say, minus 3, then that would eliminate a because minus 3 plus 3, well, that's 0. I'd then have a times 0, which is 0. And like you can see, then a disappears, and I get left with an equation in terms of b, okay? So in that case, I'm going to let x equal minus 3. So I let x equal minus 3 here. Like we said, this term will disappear. I then get b lots here of minus 3 plus 4. So in other words, 4 minus 3, so that would be 1b. So I get b lots of minus 3 plus 4. For this example, I'll write everything out in full, just so you can see the full working, but for subsequent questions, I won't bother going into that much detail. So b lots of minus 3 plus 4, and that is equal then so 5 times minus 3, so that's minus 15, plus a 7, that gives me 2 there. So in that case then, we can see that b is equal to 2, okay? So we found the value here of this constant b, but we also need to find the value of the constant a here. So in that case now, we need to eliminate b here. So in that case, what value can I pick here to eliminate b? Um, well, in that case, I'd pick x equals minus 4. If I let x equal minus 4, I 
Well, here, I'd get a lots of minus 4 plus 3, so that would be minus a. So I get a lots of minus 4 plus 3. Then for b here, this is b times, so that's minus 4 plus 4, so that's 0. So that term there will disappear. And that's going to be equal then. So that's 5 times minus 4, so that's minus 20, plus 17 there. So that gives me minus 3. Okay, so minus 20 plus 17 gives me minus 3. So if I simplify this here, I get minus a equals minus 3. And then finally, a equals 3. Okay. So what we've done there then is we found the value of a and b. So what I've got now is my partial fractions here. So therefore, in that case, what we like to do here is just rewrite this with the values of a and b um, substituted in. So in that case, then 5x plus 17 all over x plus 4 and x plus 3. That is identical. And notice here we do use the identity symbol here rather than an equals for an equation. This is actually an identity here. And this is identical then to 3 over x plus 4. And then if I substitute the value of b in here, I get plus. So what is b? b is 2, so I get 2 over x plus 3. Okay. And there we have it. So that gives us the value of a, the value of b, and that's how we actually split a single fraction up into partial fractions. So that's the case there when we have two distinct linear factors. So now the question here is, what about if we have, say, three distinct linear factors? So let's take a look then at one example here for three distinct linear factors. So what I've got here then is this algebraic fraction. So I've got 4x minus 10 over x minus 3 times x minus 2 times x minus 1. And notice here now we have more than two distinct linear factors. So I've actually got three distinct linear factors here in my denominator. So I've got x minus 3, x minus 2, and x minus 1. Well, that doesn't matter. We can still split this here into partial fractions. And notice here I split this into partial fractions. What I get then is a over x minus 3 plus b over x minus 2 plus c over x minus 1. And the method I'm working is the exact same, even though we don't have two distinct linear factors here, but three. Okay. All it means is we have a bit more work involved and we've got an extra substitution. So, like we said, the method is the exact same. So, to begin with here, I'm going to get this right hand side of this identity over a common denominator. So, in that case here, then, I'm going to times a by x minus 2 and x minus 1. So I get a lots of x minus 2 and x minus 1. So for this term here then, I'm going to times this then by x minus 3 and x minus 1. So plus b lots of x minus 3 and x minus 1. And then finally, my last term here, so c over x minus 1, I'm going to times that by x minus 3 and x minus 2. So C lots here of x minus 3 and x minus 2. And this will all be over x minus 3, x minus 2, and x minus 1, just like we can see here on the left hand side. So put my fraction line in here. So this is over x minus 3, x minus 2, and then finally x minus 1. Okay. So don't start doing anything crazy here like expanding these brackets here or anything like that. Again, the method's the exact same. So what I do now, once I've got this over a common denominator, is I equate the numerators here. So this numerator here is equal to 4x minus 10. So I'm going to write out again here. So a lots of x minus 2 times x minus 1 plus b lots of x minus 3 times x minus 1. So that's times by x minus 1. And then finally, c lots here. I've got plus c times x minus 3 times x minus 2. Okay. And this here is identical to 4x minus 10. Okay. So again, 
what we do now is we use substitution. So what I want to do here is substitute in values of x so that I can eliminate now two of the variables at a time. So for example here, if I let x equal 2, if I let x equal 2 here, the a term will disappear and the c term will also disappear because 2 minus 2 there is 0. So this whole term here would be 0 and the same applies here because 2 minus 2 is 0. So both a and c would disappear when x is 2 and then we can solve for b. Okay, so if x is 2, this disappears and this disappears. So what have I got here then? Well, I've got 2 minus 3, so that's minus 1. And I've got 2 minus 1, so that's 1. So minus 1 times 1, so that's going to be minus b. So minus b here. I've got 4 times 2, so that's a. Minus a 10, that gives me minus 2. So minus b is equal to minus 2. So therefore, b must be equal to 2. Okay, so like I said, all we've done there is we substituted x equals 2 into all of this here um, and then gone on to solve for b. Okay, so now what else can I substitute in here? Well, if I let x equal uh, 3, for example, here, if I let x equal 3 here, what would we get in this case? So, first let's identify the terms that will disappear. So, 3 minus 3 there would be 0, so b will disappear because b times 0, that would all be 0. Same again here for the c term, because 3 minus 3 is 0 again. So b and c will disappear here, I'm going to solve for a. So I'm going to get 3 minus 2, which is uh, 1, and then we've got 3 minus 1, which is 2. So I'm going to get 2a there. I get 2a is equal. 4 times 3 is 12, uh, minus the 10, I get 2. So we get 2a equals 2, and therefore a must be equal to 1. Okay, so a equals 1. And then finally, my final substitution here, we're going to let x equal, uh, let's choose 1 here. Okay, if x equals 1, this term here will disappear because this bracket here would be 0. Same again here for the b term. So 1 minus 1 is 0. So now we're going to go on to solve for c here. So what we're going to get in this case, so I'm going to get, uh, what did we say? We're going to let x equal 1. So I'm going to get 1 minus 3 there, so that's minus 2. Then I'm going to do 1 minus 2, so that's minus 1. So I've got minus 2 times minus 1, so that's actually going to be positive 2. So just in case it's not clear, see lots of 1 minus 3 times 1 minus 2. So I get c times minus 2 times minus 1. So we actually get 2c there. Okay, just to make it clear there, just be very careful with the signs here as well. Um, it's very easy to make a mistake. So I get 2c. And that's going to be equal then to 4 times 1. So that's 4 minus a 10, giving us minus 6 there. Okay. And then finally here, if I now divide both sides here by 2, we get that c equals minus 3. Okay. So c equals minus 3 then. So now what we're going to do here is just write this out again and just substitute the values of a, b, and c in to finish this example. So what have we got here? I've got 4x minus 10. So 4x minus 10, that's over x minus 3, x minus 2, and x minus 1. Okay, and that is identical then to... So I get a over x minus 3, so that's 1 over x minus 3. So 1 over x minus 3. For b then, that is 2, so I get 2 over x minus 2. So 2 over x minus 2. And then finally plus c over x minus 1. Well c is minus 3, so we get minus here, minus 3 over x minus 1 there. Okay, and there we have it. So that would be how we deal with more than two distinct linear factors. Notice the keyword here being distinct linear factors. So that's what we're going to deal with now in the next video. So that brings the end of this video on linear, um, sorry, not linear, partial fractions. So in the next video, we're going to take a look then at how we deal with repeated factors.